Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first recorded episode of the Conversations with Co uh, Coaches podcast of 2023. And I am so pleased to bring you for the third time, the first three timer on the Conversations with Coaches pod, Todd Sullivan. We've been chatting already for I, I don't know how long. This man is one of my favorite people to talk to. He's one of my favorite people to read on his social media posts. He posts some excellent stuff, which we're going to talk about here today. But let me introduce Todd for now the third time, in case you don't remember. Todd is a Christian husband, dad, athlete, coach, and a 30-year veteran of the U.S. Navy. He's held positions in corporate HR, been CEO of a startup, and now co-owns a CrossFit gym and his own coaching business. Todd's an avid reader and, I think first and foremost, loves spending time with his wife, Amy. He has a real passion for making people and organizations better. And I love the way he phrases this. Um, he says, my best days are helping others have their best day. I can't think of a better way to describe Todd in my experience. Todd, thanks for coming back on. I love chatting with you. And I could I could almost forget to hit record every time. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, thanks uh, for having me. And, you know, as we talked about earlier, like these conversations are just so natural that they don't feel like podcasts. They feel like a call between old friends. So. And that's, uh, so that, that, that warms my heart a little bit. I got a little bit of a tingle when you said that, that like that, because that's, that's, that's what I strive for. You know, obviously it's a podcast and it does podcasty things out in the world. And I want that because it serves like, you know, serves purpose for amplifying impact and whatnot and spread the word. But also first and foremost, it's just, I just love, I love these conversations because I feel like with you and with so many coaches, but with you in particular, I know I could speak to, we just, we just. Not so, I was going to say stumble into so many profound things, but really we're walking purposefully and we just aren't quite sure what we're going to find. We're like in a cave of wonders. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And, and I think each sentence is like a light beam going into a new direction in that cave. Well, I am going to grab onto one of your recent light beams because I was I was reading your, I'm not reading your LinkedIn profile, but I was like just going through my notifications and looking at recent posts and you've been posting posting pretty avidly into the, in, in the new year. I still, I'm still getting used to the fact that it's 2023, but you, you, you heard a lot of excellent phrases that get me thinking, but there was one that kind of stood out to me because I loved the way, I loved the way the words, you, the words you chose to represent this idea. And it, I really responded to it pretty profoundly. And you talked about in this post, among other things, you were talking about gratitude, which is a big, a big, well, I was going to say a, a big point of focus for me for a while. I was going to say for most of my life, like, as I, like it's just, I feel like I'm just constantly in the process of leveling up my focus on and attention to gratitude and seeing the fruits of it and having them fall off the tree and hit me on the head when I'm not realizing it. But you were, you were talking about some of the attributes of gratitude. And there was a, a phrase or a framing you used that I, I just, I'm still, I'm still kind of resonating with. I'm still thinking on. You talked about how gratitude fuels resilience. I really liked that. So I kind of wanted to tee you up to talk a little bit about that. I know you wrote about it recently, but I would love to, I would love to talk with you about it more. So gratitude fueling resistance. Yeah. So, you know, or resilience, sorry. <laughs> you know, when we, when we think of gratitude, you know, I think oftentimes we think of Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. I think we see a ton of posts about gratitude in that, in that short season, but I think it's, it's something that if we can, can kind of grasp and make part of our daily lives throughout the entire year, there's so many different facets of our life that it's going to improve, you know, our sense of purpose, our resilience, and, you know, just relationships. But for resilience, I think, you know, resilience, personal resilience, emotional resilience, relational resilience, that all relates around how well we handle our day, how, how well we handle the stressors, the challenges, just, you know, where we are in being able to deal with the good and the bad and how we take that and and transform it into our actions. And so when I think about gratitude and resilience, I think about when, when I realize some of the stressors that I have, I, I should be grateful for them. That means I have challenges in my life that are making me better. It means I have people in my life that are maybe wanting to hire me or I'm working through issues with people and I'm becoming a better friend or coach or, you know, pick a, an, an adjective. And, and so when I focus on that, it really helps me say, okay, you know, these are, these are things that are making me better and they're helping me uh, cope with these difficult situations. And uh, I'm, 
even though there might be some difficult situations, I should be thankful for the opportunity to, to be able to go through them and then to maybe use what I've learned through that to help others do the same thing. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> something that, about gratitude that I've only like, as I've moved into my like middle age, begun to realize is how gra like gratitude, forgiveness is similar in this way too, but we'll stay on gratitude. Gratitude, it doesn't change or transmute or transform the thing itself. The thing itself is just the thing itself. The gratitude is all about how it passes through you and how you let it pass through you and what you do with it as it's passing through you. And that's something I feel like I know, I know I stumbled on earlier in my in my in my years, and I'm, I still you know I, I still trip and fall on a daily basis on this and other things. But I feel like it's something that people will struggle with because sometimes when something really like really objectively bad will happen to you, some obstacle that's just it's clearly an obstacle, or some tragedy, it's clearly a tragedy. Obviously, you don't arrive at gratitude early. Like some 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 losses need to be mourned. Some grief, I mean, grief needs to be felt and experienced. That's a whole other conversation too that I'd love to have with you someday. Yeah. But gratitude is something that it doesn't change the identity of what's happening or the obstacle itself or the thing or the person or the experience. What it is, is your, your choices, your reactions and your choices. It's kind of still like a bundle. I'm still figuring out exactly what constitutes gratitude. It's a very dynamic emotional structure for me, mental structure, yeah. but it affects how you choose to echo that back out into your day. And then obviously into the days of everyone else you interact with. And I think, I think really often small scale, because I feel like it has big lessons. I'm thinking about like, for example, a, an interaction with a customer service representative where some, and typically you're interacting with customer service when something's gone wrong, or you have like a question or a problem or an issue, big or small or whatever, what whatever's going on. And you're interacting with someone whose job it is to handle people in various states of something's not right and I need help. And that person is a human being in their own right and they're having their day and their week and their month and their year and their life. And I find that if I allow myself to lock into even the tiniest sliver of resentment for the thing that's going wrong, whatever, it's, it's just the issue. It's the thing that's happening that I need help with. That resentment will echo out into and trickle in and kind of slice into the interaction I'm having with this customer service representative who does not deserve that, <laughs> did not ask for that, does not need that. And it's not, it's not really helpful. And so I'm thinking about that sometimes. And this is, this is part of my gratitude practice. That's really like, it's really helped to shape the way I see the way I live my life is I'm now conscious of that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not feeling really grateful right now. Resentment's only going to make things worse for me and everybody else around me. And it's going to tire me out. It's going to empty my cup. It's going to drain my tank. And that's why I think that's why I locked into your your choice of the word fuel, fueling resilience, yeah. because resentment in its many, many, many forms and its many, many, many sizes is exhausting. It is exhausting. You'll find yourself like you'll just get you'll be mad doing the dishes and you're like, why am I mad right now? It's like, oh, I'm still kind of mad about that little tiny thing that went wrong earlier today. And then somebody didn't say the right thing to me at that right moment. And I just kind of locked into that negative feeling, that resentment. And it just echoed out through my day. And then I'll like look back. It's like, I think I was a little short with my partner. I think she asked me a question and I kind of like, I said something that wasn't really all that great. And I'm looking back at my day, realizing all these, all this little evidence of where it's like, oh, I let my, I let my tank run low. I let, I let resentment poke a hole in my gas tank. And I was running pretty low on fuel, empathy, gratitude, and otherwise. And so I find that gratitude fills me up. And so when I choose it, it's really me just choosing to make sure that I'm topping off my gas tank so that I have the resilience to respond should something else happen later on in the day. Like sometimes you'll have something small happen. You know, you have, have you ever have those days, those when it rains, it pours kind of days, which is, is a phrase for a reason where you just feel like it's all these little things that are happening to you. And you're like, why? I'm not, I can't catch a break today. It's like, well, maybe if you stopped and decided to turn some of that, I can't catch a break today resentment into gratitude. Yeah. Maybe that'd be your umbrella. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't be getting rained on. <laughs> the exact reason I used fueled by gratitude as the title of that short piece and fueling, you know, because f I think we look at fuel as a positive action, a positive, you know, catalyst for something. Mm -hmm. And so we should, when we're thinking about our situations, look at them on 
how we fuel the good. You know, and I love how you talked about the customer service rep because hmm. I'm calling customer service or chatting with them online. I try to start out with, I'm in a situation that you had nothing to do with, but I'm hoping you can help me get out of, that I'm hoping that you can help me solve. So I try to personify, like you talked about, they're a real person on the other end. And when we make their life worse by being jerks about something that they had no input or factor into, we're not going to get their best effort to help us. And so if we want, like, we should look at them as our partner on fixing something. They're not against us. They're our partner. They're the one person that we're talking to right now that can help me the most right now fix this issue. So I should want the absolute best interaction with them. Yeah. And it's it's, it's also, it's a really, for, for some at first blush, thinking like that might seem a little bit selfish. And that's correct. Because there is, and selfish, I know, is, is, a, is a word largely used in its negative connotation, but self-care is a yeah. different version of that word that actually is attains some of the correct, the mm-hmm. right positivity. And it's like, it's, it's, it's okay. It's part of it. You want the best, you want the situation resolved. You want the best experience for all and all includes you. There's, yeah. it, that's, you can accept that, acknowledge that. And you'll, you'll trip a lot less over trying to recruit people and partner with people to solve whatever issue you happen to be facing. Well, and, and so, yeah, we're going to benefit from that, but, They are too, because they're going to have a much more positive interaction, which means the next person they help is probably going to have a better interaction because they're not coming in pretty salty from their interaction with you. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. I, I, once again, I, I, your, your choice of words. I appreciate it. I got a little chuckle out of that. I use salty all the time. Salty is one of my favorite words to describe a a person's mood. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, and we talked about this a little bit before I hit record, talking about that's that's kind of what it's all about that that impact that we have beyond our sphere of influence. That, and it's 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 both. I don't want to say trite, but it's it's definitely people are aware of that you put good out into the world, and you know, good will come back to you. You know, there's like sort of adjacent concepts like the secret or whatever, where it's like just good intentions, good actions. I mean basic kind of human kindness and the way it has a sort of amplifying effect out in the world we, we've known this i think for as long as we've known that we existed I feel, it feels like it's a part of human history at least as far as we know um but we talked about a little bit about how how intrinsic an aspect that is of being a coach and the reason why coaches are coaches is that desire to not not only really have a significant impact within their own sphere of influence and their own sphere of, of sense. Um, but to know that what they're doing is going to ring out in the, in the present and the future. And part of its legacy, just wanting to make sure that the one going kind of wanting to leave the world better than you found it in some small way, a little, little bit of a campsite rule. I don't know how, how much camping you do, but just try to leave your yep. camp better than you found it. Yep. So it's sort of like that. It's that, it's that desire to just see that, that goodness, that good impact, that positive influence echo out into the world. And that's, you have opportunities for that all day, every day for your entire life. Every time your life bumps up against another human being or a creature, it like be kind to a dog or a cat on the street. It's like, it just, it just finds its way out into the world in ways that sometimes you see and it it just restores and redeems and lifts up your like your faith in the world, you know. And most of the time, you don't see it; just goes out there and does does good work and has good impact. Those those moments of kindness, those 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 commitments to gratitude. Yeah, and I think if we are coaching people well, we're creating a relationship with them, which means that we have a little more influence than just the standard person that interacts with them. And if we coach them well to help them get over or get through an issue or get better at, you know, a facet of character or leadership, that exponential factor that you are kind of talking about is going to be so prevalent because they're going to coach their team at work better. They're going to be a better partner for their spouse or their, their partner. They're going to be a better coach for their little league, their kids, little league team or basketball Mm -hmm. team. And in those individual characteristics that we work on in coaching, they start to boiling over into other characteristics that, you know, 
that start to become better, more positive. And all of a sudden, they're working with people who you will never see or meet that are benefiting from the positive that you're pulling out of them for them to fix issues instead of giving them the you know the answer but you're you're helping pull the answers out of them to become better x but i think at the end of the day it helps make them better people and that's where the the true benefit comes in i could do this all day <laughs> <laughs> I, like like i said i love i love where our our, I, we talked. We talked a lot. It's actually the words come up numerous times in our conversation, both on on the recording and off. We are our my, our brains are in alignment very much. I find that our thoughts lead naturally into each other's in ways that make. I feel like we're making. I know you're making me better. Like I'm thinking. I'm thinking better and more dynamically and clearer about things. I'm questioning things in like a slightly like five degrees from my original viewpoint that shines a new light on it. So I. As as iron sharpens iron, as they say, I absolutely. absolutely love talking to you. I hope I'm. I hope I do the same for you. I think I do because you keep coming back. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, you know, and and before before we hit record, you know, we we talked about my initial response to when I saw your email. <laughs> how it was, I was excited, and again, I felt like it was you know a text from an you know an old friend, not <laughs> just somebody you know who. I have casual conversations with. So yeah, these are great conversations. I love sharing uh, stories with you. I love learning from you know, y- your questions and, and the way you frame things. So I think we always have you know, really good discussions that hopefully benefit the listeners of your awesome podcast. I think so. I think they do. I know I, I, can, at least, I can at least speak personally that I've had like some friends and like and family listen to listen to this podcast and they've like they've two of them have particularly mentioned our episodes or at least one of our episodes is one that they liked. So it's like, that's what it's, it's very anecdotal. It's a very personal sphere of influence, but I'll take it. <laughs> oh man. I, I Let's just do this quarterly. I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you again in April and we'll just, we'll just, we'll just do this three or four times a year in perpetuity. <laughs> Sounds great. You know, we'll have a great library of, of conversations that, uh, that constantly build on one another. Exactly. Exactly. Real quick, obviously, before we go, I LinkedIn is a great place to read, to pick up what you're putting down, to, to keep 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 in touch with or keep track of you and what you're doing, and also read some of the. I mean, basically, to have the same experience, to 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 pick up what you're putting down, to to see what you're saying, to read about gratitude and so many other things. I know you're posting quite a bit there. Is there anywhere else that people can go besides LinkedIn to kind of find out more about you and figure out what what's what's going on? Any 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 blogs you have? Any other social media you're really yeah. active on? I haven't started blogging yet, although I think I'll start, you know, a monthly one on my website, which is peoplealwaysmindset.com. I do try to share a lot of the same information from LinkedIn on Instagram, People Always Mindset, and a Facebook page for People Always Mindset. I'm trying to, I haven't hit TikTok yet, but it's only because I haven't figured it out. <laughs> That's the, the the next the next horizon, that short form video. <laughs> right. Get you on there for six, 60, 60 seconds, 90 seconds here, there, and everywhere. YouTube shorts, you know, there's so many, there's so many different places to be. It's, it's, uh, it's dizzying sometimes, but it's also, it's just another opportunity to connect. So I'm grateful for it to tie it back Thanks. together. <laughs> well, Todd, thank you for coming on for part three audience. You, you know what this is all about. Pay, pay attention for other, other coaches are awesome too, but stay tuned for part four coming, coming April, 2023 or thereabouts. <laughs> and thank you for listening. And I know I will talk to you again soon. And Todd and I will talk to you again soon as well. <laughs>